House of X number two is likely a key event that dictates how Marvel handles alternate timelines moving forward. The effects of this issue could very well be felt in the next 20 years of Marvel Comics. I mentioned a handful of times that X-Men continuity is currently a convoluted mess. It's clear from Jonathan Hickman's interviews before the launch of House of X and Powers of Ten that cleaning this up is a huge priority for the Companion series. So it was a bit surprising the first round of Hickman X-Men books honestly made things even more complex if anything else. But have no fear, Hickman starts clearing up a lot of the mess that is X-Men continuity in this week's House of X comic. He basically redefines the entire X-Men timeline in issue 2. I can see this being controversial to some, but for my money, what Hickman creates is a really clever, that's not the right word, I'll say Hickman creates an ingenious revelation that untangles a ton of continuity issues with X-Men. Don't get me wrong, this issue doesn't clear everything up. That would be far too much to expect from a single 30 page comic book. But my understanding of the X-Men universe and timeline is fully reshaped by Hickman's latest story. Make no mistake, this is Jonathan Hickman's X-Men universe and he plants his flag and owns it fully with House of X number 2. The comic is once again written by Hickman himself and illustrated by Pepe Larraz. So just what have they done here that's so revolutionary? Let's find out. As always, I'll start with the artwork. Spaniard Pepe Larraz is one of six artists featured in the 2018 class of Marvel Young Guns. Another member, Marco Cicchetto, has already broken out as one of the premier artists in the industry. Marvel clearly has high hopes for Larraz moving forward. His style is reminiscent of Stuart Immerman, whose notable works include Ultimate X-Men and Ultimate Spider-Man. Hickman's X-Men books are using lowercase lettering historically associated with Marvel's Ultimate Universe. Coincidence? I think not. If you have any personal theories regarding House of X and the Ultimate Universe, I would love to hear them in the comments. Side quest ended, back to the art. Pepe Larraz's art in House of X continues to outshine counterpart R.B. Silva's in Powers of Ten. He has a good feel for character composition and paneling. The story flow is most definitely easy on the eyes. Larraz provides a great amount of detail work in House of X. Like Maura McTaggart's ugly sweater in the bottle panel here is a pretty nice touch. The styles between the X-Men Companion series are similar enough not to be jarring, but color artist Marte Garcia provides a great sense of visual cohesiveness between the two books. His work with shadowing stands out specifically in this issue. It creates a brooding undertone that accentuates a pretty dark narrative throughout. I do have one major complaint. For some reason, Larraz's Charles Xavier looks a lot like bald Namor, which I find distracting. But all in all, Pepe Larraz and Marte Garcia do a great job illustrating House of X number two. I rate the art four out of five. So it's time to get into what Jonathan Hickman does that makes this comic book a truly unique game changer. And not just for X-Men, but likely the entire Marvel Universe. Moira McTaggart is a mutant with the ability of reincarnation. Every time she's reborn, she relives her life with the full knowledge of her previous lives. Every time she takes a divergent path from her first life, the future of the entire world changes, sometimes very dramatically. This is an ingenious concept from Hickman. It allows him to borrow and reshape ideas from previous X-Men runs to create his new vision for the franchise. It also leaves all the previous stories and continuity basically intact as a part of previous divergent timelines, all dictated by the life choices McTaggart makes. Moira McTaggart is now the linchpin that ties all X-Men continuity together and likely has similar effects throughout the entire Marvel Universe. There is one pseudo-logic gap I need to mention in this graphic. It's clearly demonstrated that while in utero, Moira has a full knowledge of her past lives and learns how to walk and talk and so on very quickly because of this. In this graphic, it identifies her X-gene manifests at age 13 like all other mutants. How are her memories associated with past lives not a part of her mutant powers? Anywho, this review is going to be a bit different. The plot is Moira McTaggart reincarnates and takes an array of different approaches based on what she learns from previous lives. Creating disparate timelines with unique consequences, see also the butterfly effect. The vast majority of the issue is characterization and exposition explaining these distinctive timelines in varying degrees of detail. 
I have to spoil some of the big reveals to explain this to make any sense of it. I'm going to avoid as many as I can, but you have been warned. Also, I really can't break the comic into characterization and plot like normal, as they're virtually one and the same. I'm going to cover the meat of the book and rate the writing overall at the end. During her second life, Moira realized that there's something different about herself, but she's aware she can't divulge she's retained memories from her previous life to her parents. She struggles to discover what makes her so unique. One day she sees bald Namor, or Charles Xavier, on television announce to the world he is a mutant. McTaggart realizes she's likely a mutant herself and seeks out Professor X. She dedicates herself to science and finally meets Charles in her third life. Moira is troubled by the nature of her own mutant existence. She finds herself unimpressed by this version of Xavier, who hasn't publicly disclosed his mutant identity. She finds him arrogant and believes he holds a god complex. Disappointed, she moves on to a new course of action. She devotes her life to curing the world of mutants. After years of research and development, Moira develops her cure for the mutant gene. Disaster strikes before she's able to rid the world of muties. She's visited by two mutants who challenge her beliefs that they are a disease on the world. They ask her, will you embrace what you are and help your people instead of hurt them? She once again changes course in her fourth life and embraces Charles Xavier and his outlook regarding mutant-human relations. This era appears to be where most of the familiar events in X-Men continuity take place. Stanley's original team of X-Men and events are contained here. Most of Chris Claremont's historic 27-year run on Uncanny X-Men is likely contained in this era, as well as the events in Avengers vs. X-Men. It makes sense that a majority of the most revered X-Men material is isolated to one specific time frame. No need to muddy the waters up too much for X-Men lifers who hold Lee and Claremont's work in the highest regard. Moira finds Xavier much earlier in life than next go around. The knowledge she provides regarding the destruction of his vision for mutant-human relations radicalizes Professor X. They create a walled mutant homeland, but the dream still dies at the hands of man. Moira later takes much more extreme measures to ensure mutant survival. All her attempts are in vain. It's inevitable that mutants and humans eventually end in conflict with mutants faring very poorly. These events radicalize McTaggart and she takes a more confrontational approach to the mutant-human dilemma. She joins the House of M and helps Magneto achieve his vision of mutant domination. She even seeks an alliance with Apocalypse. Moira is earlier made aware she doesn't have infinite lives. If she passes away before the age of 13, she won't reincarnate. She decides in her 10th life, if mutants are to have any future, she and Charles need to break all the rules. Which leads us to the final page of Powers of Ten number one. Moira shares her knowledge of nine separate timelines and the ultimate fall of mutants at the hands of man. There is a great graphic of Moira's ten lives in the back of the book. It identifies she meets Charles at age 17 in her tenth life. It also identifies House of X occurring at age 52. But Powers of Ten specifically states the events in the X-1 story occur ten years after she meets Charles, not 35. This is honestly a bit confusing to me, but diehard X-Men fans should have fun mining all the information provided. Jonathan Hickman does a brilliant job redefining the X-Men timeline and creating many new avenues for the franchise moving forward. This issue doesn't address many, if any at all, of the new mysteries he's introduced so far, but it most certainly untangled a good portion of X-Men's convoluted history. There are a couple logic gaps and minor characterization issues but overall, his script is superb. I rate Hickman's writing on House of X number 2, 4.5 out of 5. Before I put a bow on this review, I want to explain my thoughts on the timeline. The X-Zero events in Powers of Ten are clearly from Moira's 10th life, but that doesn't mean the events in the X-1, 2, or 3 stories in Powers of Ten have to be from her 10th life as well. We may very well be reading disparate futures from multiple timelines created by McTaggart's mutant abilities. I honestly never saw the events in this comic book coming, but McTaggart's newly identified mutant ability to reincarnate is a game changer for the X-Men and the Marvel Universe. Making her the linchpin that ties everything together is a bold move 
and I think it pays off very well here. Does this mean all the past issues with the X-Men are solved? Of course not. But Hickman continues to reward reader faith with excellent vision for the road ahead. I rate House of X number 2 4.5 out of 5 overall. This book receives my highest recommendation. Every X-Men fan needs to read this as well as all Marvel fans in general. House of X number 2 is likely a key event that dictates how Marvel handles alternate timelines moving forward. The effects of this issue could very well be felt in the next 20 years of Marvel Comics. I have a ton of theories after the first three issues of Hickman's X-Men reboot. I'm definitely starting to believe his X-Men occurs in the Ultimate Universe, which is likely contained, or at least part of it, in McTaggart's 10th lifetime. I still believe time travel will be used to reset the universe to prevent future events after the final pieces of a data are extracted from the Black Brain Mutant in the Powers of 10 X3 timeline. Whatever the future holds for Hickman's X-Men, it's sure to be inventive, and we probably won't see it coming. If you haven't watched my Powers of 10 number 1 review, it's available now. I got it out very late due to a short trip, followed by a medical situation with one of my kiddos. There should be a link to the video in the upper right hand corner, and I'll post a link in the video description. I hope you all join me for tomorrow's Batman review, and I'll have my Powers of 10 number 2 review up in short order next week, as long as the kids are okay. Talk to you all later. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.